Okay. Blake Miller's home in Oak Park comes to life when he opens the door for his energetic little dogs. This is sage, and this is uh, cinnamon. Cayenne and ginger round out the pack. Miller calls them his Spice Girls. What? 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 But these days, the house is quieter. Miller's long-term partner, Anthony Bennett, recently died from ALS. This is him in his Army uniform, yeah. They were both in the military, back when you could get kicked out just for being gay. It was a different time, not just in the military, but for anyone like Miller's partner who became HIV positive. Um, he probably lost over 100 friends that died of HIV. And um, the friends that he did have were of the mind that, you know, we're sick, we could die, but we're going to live. And they, they lived to the, the fullest that they could. Against the odds, Bennett survived long enough to see HIV become something people could live with thanks to antiretroviral drugs. Along the way, he participated in many research studies. Miller says Bennett was motivated in part by feelings of survivor's guilt. And when ALS gave him only months to live, he wanted to keep giving back in some way. Over the years, you get to learn to know somebody, and his biggest thing was helping others. That's where a new research effort at UC San Diego came in. The last gift study focuses on HIV patients at the end of their lives. Participants with a terminal illness stop taking their HIV drugs toward the end and they let researchers draw blood regularly to monitor the activity of the virus. They also consent to having their bodies autopsied within hours of death. Uh, when they asked us if he would donate his body, he looked at me and I looked at him and we both smiled and he said, yes, anything you want. UC San Diego's Davy Smith leads the study. He says the goal is to find out how the virus persists in patients' bodies, how it changes, and how it comes back when drugs are no longer keeping it under control. It's when people stop their medication, the vast majority of them, the virus comes back within about four weeks. And where that virus comes from and where it is hiding while the, the therapy is on is still unknown. Smith says this is what's needed to advance research toward developing a cure. And it's only ethical to study HIV patients who've stopped taking their meds when they're already near death. So here it is very clear. They are not going to benefit anything from this study. We are not trying to cure whatever is causing them to be terminally ill. So when they participate, they are doing so out of the real goodness out of their heart. Susanna Concha Garcia is an outreach coordinator for the study. She talks with people who lived through the AIDS crisis of the 80s and 90s and had to watch their friends die. They don't know why. They didn't. They're the ones that they made it. And so they want to give something back. The researchers realize this study asks a lot of patients and their loved ones. National AIDS Treatment Advocacy Project Executive Director Jules Levin wonders, is it worth it? And in the end, are we ever going to really find a cure? Levin thinks too much research is focused on a cure at a time when more and more HIV patients are dealing with aging-related problems like cognitive impairment, frailty, and higher cancer rates, problems that he feels are not being adequately addressed. Should we be doing cure research? Yes. But it's sucking all the air out of the, the aging problem in this country. Smith agrees that the more immediate needs of an aging HIV population are important to address. He says his colleagues are working on that in other ways, but he thinks efforts like the last gift study are important too. And we need a cure for HIV because thousands of people still get infected in the United States every year, and thousands of people die, and there's still a stigma attached to it. Um, so having a cure for HIV would be one of the modern miracles if possible. For now, the last gift study is only observing patients at the end of their lives. But Smith says this research could eventually progress to more aggressive experimental treatments, perhaps tweaking patients' immune systems in attempts to completely eradicate the virus. So far, Anthony Bennett is the only patient to have completed the study, and the researchers say it's far too early to report any results. Blake Miller says he's proud of his partner. So for him, knowing that it was the last gift, the last thing that he could do, um, it just... It made him very happy. The last gift study aims to enroll about five patients per year over the next five years. David Wagner, KPBS News.